Is there a connection between natural disasters and climate change? We'll look at how they affect in Nigeria. U.S. President Donald Trump speaks to African leaders and the scoring business potential on the continent and addressing ongoing violence in conflict zones. Pirates, drug smugglers and illegal fishermen menace the Gulf of Guinea. West African navies join forces to protect the waters. Africa 54 starts right now. Hello and thanks for tuning into the show that goes around the continent to bring stories from near and far. I'm Chamberlain Oso at Channels Television here in Lagos. I'm joined by my colleague at Voice of America in Washington. Well, thanks. I'm Vincent McCory at our global headquarters in Washington, D.C. Happy to be with you again for another edition of Africa 54. Now, let's start off with a look at natural disasters and climate change. Chamberlain Oso in Lagos brings you that story. Indeed, extreme weather events all around the world, like the hurricanes in the Caribbean, floods in Asia and Africa, and other such droughts are largely attributed to the impact of climate change. While the link between such natural disasters and climate change remains disputed, the devastations are telltale signs of predictions by scientists. Here in Nigeria, the major challenge has been floods across the country despite warnings by the Nigerian Meteorological Agency. Here's our report. The Nigerian Meteorological Agency, in its 2017 seasonal rainfall report earlier this year, predicted heavy rainfall in parts of the country. The warning was for everyone to take precautionary measures, but apparently not enough was done to prepare for the disaster, and this is the outcome. In Niger State, home to the Kianji and Shiroro dams, residents of Banki, Ku and Chachania communities experienced the force of nature firsthand. More than 10 lives were lost and many houses washed away. Some of the locals engaged in a dramatic rescue of a young man drowning. Around two o'clock, I heard my neighbors was, they were knocking my daughter, please come out, come out, the, the rain is almost eating up your house. Before I could get my key and come out, people jumped through the fence and rescued my children and I myself. Miles away from Niger to the south-south region in Delta State, floods posed a dangerous threat to motorists. This car on a street inundated with water was at the mercy of torrents. And in the southeast, Imo State, over 50 houses were submerged in the federal housing estate after over 12 hours of non-stop rain. The situation in Benway State, in the Middle Belt region, was also grim. Heavy rainfall led to River Benway overflowing its banks, flooding 21 local government areas across the state, leaving 244,000 people displaced. For those who are lying, say, in um, low-lying areas, if adequate drainage systems have not been provided, or if they have been provided and they are blocked, then of course you expect this kind of thing to happen when it rains in torrents. In Lagos, the country's commercial capital, typically busy roads and streets turn to rivers on the morning of the 8th of July. The most shocking images were streets of cosmopolitan areas, Victoria Island and Lekki Peninsula. Luckily, it was a Sunday and most people were not out and about. Environmentalists argue that unprecedented flooding and other recent climate disasters could be warning signs of the increasing effects of climate change due to unchecked carbon gas emissions and deforestation, among other factors. Flood waters are now receding in previously flooded parts of Nigeria and relief intervention underway to support affected communities. Calls for long-term solutions include prompt response to early warnings, better disaster management mechanisms and stronger legislation to protect the environment. 
Joining us to discuss climate change and its impact in Nigeria is Professor Lawrence Ezemoye, the National President of the Nigerian Environmental Society. He joins us from our studio in Benin. Welcome to Africa 54, Professor. Let's start with this. Is climate change directly linked to the weather disasters we've seen in recent years, considering the scale? The answer is yes. There are several evidence to suggest that most of the disasters we have today are related to weather and climate change. Climate is changing and is so disastrous on the livelihood of man. Just in 2013, the World Watch Institute reported that of the natural disasters that occurred, 905 were weather related. And apart from that, it cost almost $170 billion in terms of loss and almost $70 billion of insured properties. These are the global level. At the sub-Saharan sub sub African level, it is also pertinent to note that 1,000 incidents were re reported, and of these 300,000 were all weather-related. In Nigeria, the scenario is not different. These are clear evidence to show that the weather, natural disaster in this country are all weather related and must be checked and must be addressed. Uh, from what we've seen, Nigeria, like any other coastal state, is more at risk of flooding. How do you suggest we prepare ourselves for such events? You know, there are two approaches to preparedness. One of them is through mitigation to ensure that even the costs are reduced. The second one is through adaptation, to provide a response to affected communities and provide opportunities for resilience and reintegration into the society. I believe that our response mechanism must have a national, state, and local government interface. And what is happening now is encouraging, but we need to go beyond that. There is a need for stakeholders' collaboration and even the affected communities must be part of the contingency plans. So I think there is a need to provide strategic means of, of accommodating the displaced individuals as a result of these natural resources, particularly flooding, which has become preeminent in the Nigerian scenario. Well, much as many say it's a good thing that Nigeria is committed to the Paris Climate Agreement, what domestic policies do we need to reduce gas emissions to protect the environment? You see, I will always say that Nigeria is prepared in the sense that we have extant laws that can stop and reduce the emission of noxious gases into the air. Nigeria has signed a treaty and they have agreed to comply with the reduction of emission. How do you do this? Of course, there must be a need for new technology and knowledge base to ensure that reduction of, of noxious gases through emission is curtailed and reduced. 